What's up guys? This is Cosmic Sparrow and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I know I've mentioned in the past that I wanted to wait for a while so that way I could get up and on my feet for the whole YouTube scheme, but this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Now, if you're a huge Nintendo 64 fan like me and like hearing creepy things about all of the games, then you're in luck. Because I have spent so much time getting facts and evidence and proof and all sorts of things to show you today. So, without further ado, let's dive in to the dark world of Crow 64. Before I get into this, I would like to mention a few things. First of all, if you've seen iceberg videos, I will be presenting this like an iceberg, except there is no iceberg. I will be separating the different levels of creepiness or important things by where they would be placed on an iceberg. The second thing I would like to mention is that this is going to be a multi-part series, which means there will be more than one episode. The reason for this is because there is a lot of evidence that I would like to dig into with you guys, and it will take more than just one mega episode to cover it all, and I feel it wouldn't be sufficient enough to just do it all in one episode so I can really get in deep with you guys about everything going on here. My third and final point is a warning. Now, it probably won't be in this episode where I talk about it, but later on there will be heavy talk about suicide and terminal illnesses and fatal illnesses. So if that sort of stuff is triggering for you or you're sensitive about that stuff, please be very cautious when you watch any further videos. The year is 1995, and a German game developer, Manfred Lorenz of Opus Interactive, was a known perfectionist, and he had recently released an Ocean Quest game on the SNES. It was a great success, and he decided to start the development of Crow 64, later named Catastrophe Crow, for the Nintendo 64. This game was inspired by a drawing his daughter Thea made later in 1997. Opus Interactive would openly reveal a game made in the Space World video game conference at the same year at the same time, and Opus Interactive sent review copies of Crow 64 to various game journalists and would do interviews about the development and features of the game. Catastrophe Crow was set to release in 1999, but was delayed to 2000 for mysterious circumstances. Eventually, the game creator went missing and was declared dead in 2000 thus never the game having been released. Then, in 2020, a man by the name of Adam Butcher found a copy of the game that was given to someone. At the top of the copy, the word Crow was written in Sharpie, and there were numbers written at the bottom of the cartridge. So, this YouTuber decided to plug it into a 64 and document a gameplay of it. It seemed innocent at first, as the character started out in a grassy plain in front of a building. The character decides to go into the building to search for their father. As the game progresses, each level got more and more darker and creepier. At the end of the game, there is a cutscene, and the crow is now older. The camera pans to a little crow laying on a hospital bed attached to equipment, and she seems to be decapitated. The game then ends shortly after this. That is all of Catastrophe Crow's gameplay. This is where things start to take a darker turn, and for the worse. People began to dig into the game's files to find tons and tons of creepy assets and file names and hidden codes within the game's memory. However, this part will focus on Manfred himself. Manfred has two children, 
Nils, his youngest son, and Thea, his daughter. He also has a wife, and her name is Marta. After Manfred's disappearance, people started getting curious and decided to figure out what happened to him. Unfortunately, they found one of his boats adrift in the middle of a sea, and they found a note addressed to his wife, and this was no ordinary boat. On Manfred's boat, a letter was left to his wife, as mentioned before. It was initially written in German, but many people have translated it and have come up with something like this. Marta, you were never in the wrong, and you still aren't today. It is impossible to sneak peek inside of people's heads to figure out why they act a certain way, or to find out why we are so cruel to each other. We both did what we thought was right, and we can both prove each other's insanity. You took from me, and I took from you. My path is set in stone, so that the world can stay open. I finally went home. Manfred. Based off of this letter, people speculate that events that happen in the game, certain characters or places, reflect what happened in his life. This concludes the end of the first episode. I know it seems awful short, but I wanted to keep it that way, so that way we can separate the less complex stuff from the more complex stuff, which we will touch on in the next episode. So please keep an eye out, and be sure to keep updated with everything going on. Thank you for watching, and be sure to drop a like and subscribe. Thank you.